Well, let's bring in James Crisp, who is uh, uh, the Brussels correspondent for The Telegraph. Just gives us an example of this, doesn't it, of how complex and tricky some of these issues might be. This is, this is an incredibly complex, painstaking process. process. I mean, we've, there was a lot of talk saying that the British had come here unprepared. Well, that just isn't the case. You can't come to the game without the proper equipment. Not and on the basis of this. Not I mean, on the basis so of this. You know, yeah. I've been told that they have files as big as their arms when they went in. 98 negotiators came here to face off against 45 European Union negotiators. And they sat in hot, airless rooms in the Berlimont. I mean, I'm aware it's just started raining, but up until recently, it was sweltering here in Brussels. And they went through each issue line by line for hours. Every meeting overran. It's an incredibly taxing and, frankly, probably quite tedious so, process. So why is Michel Barnier giving the impression, particularly when it comes to the financial settlement, that he's not had clarification from the UK side? He's, he, I don't want to say spinning it, but he's giving the impression that they are unprepared. That is certainly the impression that the EU would like to give. Um, I'd say what Mr Barnier really wants is for us to say what we think we owe. But we're not going to do that. We have said that there are obligations which are survivable. We're telling them, you need to show us the working and tell us what you think we are. So we have a Mexican standoff. And only, and only this week, actually, did the European side produce a legal document, a, mm. a sort of legally thought out document on how we would come to that calculation. Yes, they did. But what they are looking for is a response from us. They, no one wants to talk about the figure, right? You start talking about the figure, and politics enters this quite official series of negotiations. So it's not the figure that's being discussed yet, right. but it's hanging in the background. I mean, everyone wants to know, is it going to be 40 billion, 60 billion, or 100 billion euros, as a French minister recently suggested? So do you think there would be a scenario where we might get to October where they've agreed a mechanism for calculating this unknown figure, but they haven't actually produced it because neither side really wants to say what it is? I think that's, that's in the water. I think that could happen. I mean, the problem, the problem is that all of these talks, the talks on the free issues, the citizens' rights, the bill and Ireland, we need to have sufficient progress on those talks before the EU 27 will talk about our future relationship. And our future relationship, those talks are crucial because that will involve probably a free trade agreement. OK. James, thank you very much. I just want to give you one last example of where there are tricky issues, one that I just spotted here on the page. So, for instance, uh, the UK side is saying to the EU side, look, we're prepared to give um, settled status to those people who've been in the UK for five years, but we want to do a criminal background check, a police records check on those EU citizens that are going to stay. And the EU is saying, well, hang on, that's going to discriminate against EU citizens when you might not have any suspicion. We don't want that to happen just part of uh, <laughs> these very complex negotiations which are going on and there are all sorts of red issues in these documents that they have to get around the table and discuss further in August and September.